Welcome ladies and gentlemen to lesson 6, cost volume profit analysis. In this lesson we're going to learn the basics of uh, cost volume profit analysis graphically and through various examples. Um, we're going to go through examples of calculating break even sales and break even units. We're going to go through uh, target profits, operating leverage, mar margin of safety, and we're going to calculate uh, multi product break even. Um, so first, let's uh, get into the concepts and definitions. Make sure you have the lesson six cheat sheet in front of you. Uh, have it on the concepts and definition side. Uh, we're going to start up here at the top left and we're going to go through the cost volume profit graph. So look at the graph you'll see we've got dollars on our y-axis, units on our x-axis and we've got in sales blue. We've got that blue line. Uh, we've got total fixed costs in red and then we've got uh, total fixed and variable costs. That's our mixed cost graph, our y equals uh, uh, a plus BX uh, line. So that's the green and you'll see uh, the green and the red they have the same y-intercept at uh, zero volume our mixed cost is equal to our fixed cost, right? Zero volume, mixed cost is equal to our fixed cost but then as we increase units our fixed cost stays the same but now our variable costs kick in and that's why the green it goes up because it's a mix between our fixed and variable. Our sales start at zero um, with zero units and zero dollars, but that goes up uh, as we sell and uh, uh, units, we increase dollars. That's the cost volume profit graph. Um, a cost profit, uh, cost volume profit analysis, it's a managerial decision making tool that focuses on the relationship among sales price, volume of units sold, fixed and variable costs and profit. That's what we're going to get into in this lesson is analyzing different ways of uh, looking at profit, break even, um, but it's going to you know, it's going to uh, revolve around sort of this, this graphic representation, but it's going to do it in different uh, types of equations. Uh, next, let's talk about the contribution margin income statement from lesson five. We went through uh, the difference between the, the traditional income statement and the contribution margin income statement and how the uh, absorption costing uh, produced our traditional income statement, but then variable costing produces our variable income um, variable income statement, um, and then the, uh, not our variable income statement, sorry, our contribution income statement. And so now we're getting into variable uh, costing, and we're looking at uh, the contribution income statement. Contribution margin income statement categorizes costs as variable or fixed. That's what we saw in lesson five. There's a contribution margin. That's the difference between sales revenue and variable cost. There's a unit contribution, which is uh, demonstrates how much each additional unit contributes to fixed costs and profit. And then there's a contribution margin ratio. That demonstrates how much additional contribution margin is generated by each dollar of sale. All right, so our equations. We've got contribution margin equals sales minus variable costs. Yeah. Unit contribution margin ratio equals contribution margin, uh, contribution margin ratio equals unit contribution margin divided by unit selling price. Contribution margin ratio um, we can also calculate it by doing total contribution margin divided by total sales. So we can do it on unit basis or total sales basis. Um, now we're going to get into different uh, things that we can do with a, a contribution margin. Break even analysis determines the level of sales in units and sales dollars required for a company to break even. That's right here. Break even point, the point at which the company will make zero profit. Um, up top right, we're going to look at margin of safety. That's the difference between actual or budgeted sales and the break-even point. Um, that equation is margin of safety equals actual or budgeted sale minus break-even sales. The break-even analysis can be approached in two ways, equation method or contribution margin method. We're going to look at it both ways throughout various problems. Break-even sales equals total fixed costs divided by contribution margin ratio. Break-even units equals total fixed costs divided by unit contribution margin. Sales equals variable cost plus fixed, plus fixed cost plus profit. Uh, profit equals sales minus variable costs minus fixed cost. Target sales equals total fixed cost plus target profit divided by contribution margin percent. Target units equals total fixed cost plus target profit divided by unit contribution med, med, uh, margin. Degree of operating leverage, that equals contribution margin divided by net operating income. Now I went through those equations pretty quick. Those are given. Um, but we'll see those in examples. Now let's start at number one. We're going to look at the cost volume profit graph. Okay, so at the red one, middle left here. The relationship among revenue, cost, profit, and volume can be expressed graphically by preparing a cost volume, uh, cost volume profit graph. Assume HMS Round Valley sells uh, 
2,000, 5,000, and 8,000 of its three-foot foam lifesaver. A foam lifesaver, you know, it's those things you see on the boats. It's not a lifesaver that you eat. It's the, it's the actual foam lifesaver that you throw out to save somebody's life if they fall overboard. All right, so say they, uh, they have this at uh, different level of variable expenses, fixed expenses at these different op uh, volume levels. Sales at 2,000 lifesavers. Um, They've got twenty thousand dollars, so we can assume, right, that it's it's uh, it's going to be what uh, ten dollars per unit, uh, and then uh, the fixed costs are twenty dollars. So at two thousand life savers, they're a negative operating profit. At five thousand, they're at break even, and at eight thousand, they're a twelve thousand uh, dollar profit. Now let's calculate contribution uh, ratio, contribution margin ratio. We can do it on a per unit basis and um, on a total basis. So on a total basis, at the $8,000 level, you'll see that contribution margin equals uh, $32,000 and the total sales equals $80,000, so that gives us 40%. Per, uh, 40%. Now, at a per unit level, all we do is we take the, uh, the contribution margin, which is $32,000, divided by $8,000, that gives us the 4, and then we take the uh, uh, total sales divided by the total units, and that's 10. So either way, on a total or a unit basis, we get 40%. Now this graph expresses that, obviously you can see here, at 2,000 units, which is up here in this chart, at 2,000 units on the graph, we're in this sort of boxed area, which is called the loss area. That's the point at which sales is less than our total fixed and variable cost. Then at 5,000 right here, it's break even. Our sales equals our total fixed and variable cost. And then we go out here to 8,000 and we see our sales is above that line, right? That, that's, so this graph is expressing what this chart is saying. And you can see that 8,000, our sales are greater than our total fixed and variable cost. Our fixed costs are staying the same at all the activity levels, right? You can see that here, and then you can see that here on the graph. All right, let's move on to two. Use the given information from one, right, these different sales volumes. Assume that management of HMS Round Valley Inc. believes that it can increase Lifesaver sales from $5,000 to $7,000 if it spends $9,000 on advertising. Would this be a profitable decision? Well, let's take uh, uh, what we know at $5,000. At $5,000, we know we got sales of $50,000, variable expenses of $30,000, contribution margin of $20,000, fixed cost of $20,000, and zero profit. So what happens if we increase advertising expense uh, by uh, nine grand, but we also increase sales. Well, so at seven thousand, uh, uh, at seven thousand dollars of sales, our variable expenses at seven thousand units, we get seventy thousand of sales. Um, but remember, our 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 per unit cost is six. It's the difference between the ten and the four. Our per unit cost is going to be the seven times the uh, 7,000 times the 6, that's 42,000. That gives us a $28,000 contribution margin. But we've increased uh, fixed expenses by adding advertising expense. That gets us 29,000. So that puts us at a negative one. That's worse off than we were. So no, that's not a profitable decision. Moving on to three. Use the given information from one and two but calculate the contribution margin using the unit contribution method. All right, so we're gonna take the same information, but we're gonna present it differently. Increase in contribution margin is 2,000, right? We're gonna have 2,000 additional sales, and we know our contribution margin from one is $4 per unit. So 2,000 times four, that gives us 8,000. So that's the additional profit we're gonna get, uh, right? And you can see that here on contribution, 20,000 versus 28,000. So that incremental difference is 8,000. But we increase our advertising, our fixed costs by 9,000. That's, we get to that negative 1,000. That's not a profitable decision. All right, let's go to four. Moving down to four, use the given information from one, Management at HMS Round Valley Inc. believes that using a higher quality film will result in an increase in sales from 5,000 to 8,000. The higher quality raw materials will lead to a $1 increase in variable cost per unit. Would this be a profitable decision? All right, let's look at the, the chart. We've got the given information at, at 5,000 units, but now we're going to increase to 8,000. So we know that uh, the selling price is $10 per unit. Uh, the 10 times the 8 gets us 80,000. But now we're increasing our variable expense. Remember, our variable expense is the difference between our contribution margin and our selling price. So that was 6 at the volume of 5,000, but now we're increasing the, that 6 to 7 because we're increasing the raw materials by a dollar. So our variable cost is now $7 per unit. The 7 times 8,000 is 56,000. That gives us a contribution margin of 24,000. Less our fixed costs stay the same, so our, less our fixed cost is $4,000. So we, yes, we were able to increase our net operating income there. That's a profitable decision. Go to five. Use the given information from one. 
Management at Round Belly is approached by a customer for a one-time order to sell 3,000 lifesavers to a wholesaler who will put a private label on them. There would be uh, no change in cost structure as a result of this sale. Round Belly wants the one-time sale to produce a profit of $4,000. What selling price should uh, Round Belly quote to the wholesaler? Okay, there's going to be no change to the cost structure. That means there's no change to fixed costs. That means we're only looking at uh, contribution margin right here. Uh, so if we want and we know that our selling price or the cost of or the variable expense for each unit is $6, right? Well, we want to have $4,000 of profit, right? So, and we know that it's going to be 3,000 units. So take the $4,000, that's what we want, divided by the 3,000 units, that's what we're going to sell. And so per unit, we need to, we want a, a, a $1.33 profit per unit. Uh, we add that to our variable cost per unit that we already know, which is $6. So the selling price to get to the $1.33 per unit profit, we have to add to the $6. So we want a, a selling price of $7.33. Let's look at that uh, in another way down below. 3,000 lifesavers times $7.33 per lifesaver gets us a total selling price of $22,000. Now, the total variable cost of 3,000 units is uh, 3,000 times six because they're selling uh, a variable selling expense is six dollars. Six dollars times the 3,000 gets us 18,000. Uh, minus uh, so the 22,000 minus the 18,000 gets us a 4,000 dollars that we required as the profit. Now flip over to the other side of your uh, cheat sheet. Okay, we're on the back side of the lesson six cheat sheet. Uh, at number six, use the given information from one management and round belly to decide to one.